do you expect from this travel to Medjugorje? Nothing special. I saw some uh, videos about Medjugorje and I read the story that there were some children uh, who uh, got the appearance of Mary and uh, I believe it, but uh, I think a lot of people go there because they want to have some miracle to happen and I think maybe it's a bit too over uh, expected, uh, this uh, holy uh, mess of this place. What I expect? I just ex expect, I I'm curious, I'm, I'm curious about people who come from uh, many uh, different parts of the world and they come for one reason, to pray, to, and there is a big uh, thing which keeps them together is uh, the faith in God and the, be uh, the religion and I find it very interesting. I expect some cleanness, some some freshness, nothing else. go across the field and uh, take uh, the way uh, left and uh, you can see and ask where is the potboard and uh, maybe see you in uh, two hours. Okay. People usually come here because they want some uh, change and some, or they have a particular problem and they want some solution for that. Or? I think that when person comes on a pilgrimage without any curiosity, it's when it's something tragic just happened to them. You know, something that is really now. This is their. They feel like this is the only chance. Now or never. Mm -hmm. The most amazing what strikes me about Medjugorje specifically, it is uh, confessions. That's just my personal opinion on that, you know. And because I spoke to uh, many priests and they say, you know, I don't need to see Medjugorje, I don't need to even go to the hills, I see the truth of Medjugorje. I see the confessionals, I see the people confess their sins for so many, so many years, such a wound, you know, it's just impossible to live with this hills. We are at the place where 29 years ago, two children, Ivanka, a Maria was just walking here at the fields. It was all just covered with the fields of grapes, tobacco, corn, and uh, people were very simple people. So 
Anyway, they decided to walk back to the village, and uh, which we are right now located at the village that calls Biakovici. So all of a sudden they walked back. They walked back here to the, to the uh, foot of the hill, mm-hmm. and um, they all, three of them looked up, and they saw the same thing. They mm-hmm. saw a lady who was making the motion, mm-hmm. who was holding a purse to be like a child, and she was uh, in light. Mm-hmm. So six of them saw Our Lady together. And it was a big shock for them. It was just, they, they cried and they prayed, and they were afraid at the same time. Each one of them say that they have experienced such a things that they have absolutely never thought to be experiencing, or what they felt like they would never feel that, ever. Absolutely amazing. The first message was a message of peace. Mm-hmm. So, let's go. Then we begin, and as we are right now at the first station, we see that Archangel Gabriel, he is announcing this beautiful news to Our Lady that she will conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit. And whatever is in our lives, whatever is troubling us, whatever is painful to us, whatever is so hurting, and when it becomes to be so heavy, the cross becomes to be so heavy that we cannot see and everything is in darkness. But as always remember that you come to us in the most gracious way, in the most faithful way, by giving us your Son, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Drava Maria, milosti polna, Gospod je s teboj, blagoslovljen nas ime ženami in blagoslovljen je sad tvojega telesa, Jezus, ki je svetega duha poslal. Sveta Marija, Drava Marija, milosti polna, Gospod je s teboj. 365 days in a year, 29 years. You feel when you come to Medjugorje, you feel it. You feel it. Do I feel anything? Personally? What, what do you feel? Yes. Because you can um, pray at home. Yes, yes. But when you come here, because a lot of people uh, come here to yes. pray. So what do you feel here? What is uh, different? Or, or is there... A I honestly, to tell you that, without any exaggeration, I feel like a smallest little child that came home uh-huh. where mother... It's like I feel, I feel that I'm on her arms. Uh-huh. That's what I feel.
подняться, если на это касается. Да. 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 Аня, я кометил за пентагем. Я кометил за... I need uh, your prayer and your yes. Uh, it, it's easy for you to be lost uh, in some material things will be for me as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. <laughs> They went on the streets to, to invite men there to come and stay with them, to, uh, to get a bite to eat maybe, to, uh, to have a place to sleep. Also to speak to them, to show them unconditional love. You know? Mother of never asked anything from, from them. Not money, not anything else, and not anything from their families. All she asked is for the time and the prayers. These houses were built by us. Uh, all the, the fencing, all the lamps, we don't watch TV on a regular basis, okay? We, we don't have cell phones, we don't have, we don't have any money here, and we don't have girls. Yeah, maybe you're with us, okay? <laughs> uh, that's our daily schedule, okay? We, all, we have mass three times a week, Saturday nights at two. We have Eucharistic adoration. And there's also time for personal adoration. Uh, that's, that's about what we do here. You know? Before I came to the community, I, for me, I was a heroin addict for 15 years. Um, I've come from a... From uh, real close to, to Newark, New Jersey, it's really it's close. From, it's close to New York City. That's where I grew up. About 15, 15 minutes away from Newark. Um, and I remember before I came to this community, my father told me about it. He knew about the community for about a year, and he told me every day about it. And um, and he prayed for me every single day that I would come here because he knew that I tried going to rehabs, I tried to detox in the hospitals, and and, and, and these things, and nothing worked for me. Um, I go to rehab and, and to, to the hospital to detox, and I, I would leave with more friends and more connections. It was more; it was easier for me to, to, to get drugs when I left. Um, I knew all the nurses; they knew me by name. Another thing is, is is the prayer. I never prayed before in my life. The only time I ever prayed was when uh, there was a police car in my rearview mirror, and I, I prayed to God that He wouldn't put His lights on, you know, and they pull me over and arrest me. And <laughs> please, God, don't let me go to jail tonight. And that was it. That was the only time I prayed. Now, I can say every day, every day I pray. But for me personally, I had to come here because I needed, I needed to change everything, my entire life, my, my future. I had no future. I didn't, I didn't want any future. Um, also, with the friends, like, like Matt said, like I, I, I never had any friends. For 15 years, I, the only friends I ever had were, 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 if you had money or a car, then you were my friend. If I had money, I usually had money, and I usually had a car. Then I, these were my friends. But as soon as it was all gone, they were gone. And, and I used people too, the same way. They're the same way that that was just how it is, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're a drug addict. Now I have friends, and now I'm, I'm friends with this guy. I'm going to be friends with him forever. And it's not because we have money in our pockets or a car. Like, I look to the future, I, 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 I see us, like, like our kids being friends one day, you know. And this is the thing that I never would have imagined two and a half years ago. I couldn't, st- I couldn't, I couldn't. Tell you like how, how how many how many things have happened to me like over the, over the past two and a half years since I entered the community that never would have happened if I if, if I didn't come here um, if I would have stayed in, in the hospital um, like I said and quit using drugs but so many other things have happened like I said I made friends like this I learned how to pray I learned how to say thank you for for to, to God for letting me live through all these things that I once cursed him for um, before I came here two and a half years ago I was I was a junkie from New Jersey. One of how many drug how many drug acts are there in New York? Which is probably about a million, if not more. And now I can say I've been all over the world. I've been to Poland. I've been to Austria. I've been to, to Italy. I've been here to Bosnia, Herzegovina, telling my story to people from all around the world, people from Russia, people from from Korea. Um, I, I not only I, I believe Mother of one day is going to be a saint. I can say I lived in her community. I had her to pray for me. I ate lunch with her a couple of times. She stopped, she stopped me in the face once, <laughs> but out of love. And, um, you know, I, um, I, I visited the, the, the Auschwitz um, concentration camp. We went to Poland to, to do a, a show. Um, that's why I have the, the, this beard. It's not because I 
shave this morning and my beard does not grow that fast. Um, because I play like St. Joseph. So I can say that too. That's something I never would have thought. I, I, I've been all over the world playing St. Joseph in, in, a, in a play. How could I have ever done that in a regular, in, in, a, in a rehab or a hospital? Um, you know, I've made friends. I have friends from all over the world now. And these are all things that just, I, I joke you from New Jersey, you know, how many, how many people can, can say that? These are things I, I, I can say now because I came to the community. Um, because I gave it a chance. And if, I just end it on, on, on this, if, if, if I could, we have 60 houses like Matt said all over the world. And I think I came here to talk to you guys for a reason. And, that was, and, and now I understand why God kept me alive all these, all these, these all, through all these experiences. And I think it's, I think it's cool to, to talk to you guys. When my father heard the testimony, just like I, I'm talking to you guys, he, 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 he had a little bit of hope. He saw a little bit of hope. If I could give somebody here, or somebody that I've talked to, or to one of you guys, to, to, the, to the pilgrims that come here, the same, the same, that little bit of hope that my father had for me, then how, how can I regret the past 15 years and all the suffering that comes along with being a drug addict? I, I can't. I, I can't regret it. Thank you very much. The word up top means resurrection. Now this, everybody in the picture is looking at Jesus, except for, for King Solomon. This is Elijah, King Solomon, King David. King Solomon is looking at his father, King David, and King David is looking at Jesus. Mother Revere says that this is the, the example we need to follow. The son needs to look at the father for the example, and the father needs to look at Jesus for the example. We have Adam and Eve here that are being pulled out of, the, out of their graves of sand. And you notice that Jesus has grabbed them, he's pulling them up. Okay, it also represents us, okay? For sure, for sure we were we were going up there, we feel like Jesus uh, yanked us up. Eve is missing a hand there. We have, this is a, this is the tabernacle here. The original was in the heart of Jesus, but uh, Mother Vera had to move down to uh, to the darkness where hell is to show where Jesus went to, uh, to come and save us. And this is the chains of sin broken by the, the three nails of the crucifixion. There's four people here. I know. I only know that in the original there was only three. Okay, I don't, I don't know who the three are, but this guy is uh, is the representation of community in heaven because we've had guys that have, that have passed away through the community that when they were so has have gone to heaven. So that's it. That's all I know. There's a million other things about it. I, I don't know anything. But uh, there's a there's a card in the store if you guys care to, to learn more about it. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. And, uh, Anyway, that's that's like why. Держава. Держава. Ево, ай, по русски шпрега, Говорите, по русски язык. Ай, где сидели на трубе? А упала, бе пропала, что Я сам копа каналы, не волю телевизию. До свидания, до свидания. И хесене. Мария Пирт, Пир, not once, you know. Mm -hmm. And even if uh, maybe she will not appear anymore, but we st it still uh, connect people to mm -hmm. this place. I, I just, well, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just uh, when I think about it, I remember about uh, Lourdes. Mm -hmm. uh, all finished a uh, long time ago, mm -hmm. but uh, people still it's come. Cool. Uh, <laughs> still, that uh, for all your life, uh, what uh, that's uh, what she wants to say. Exactly why do you go and where do you go? And um, 
what is supposed to be there happening, but you do go. And uh, as, as you go, something definitely will happen. In, in our very nature, we are created to be pilgrims. And whatever pilgrim you undertake, whichever pilgrimage you choose, that pilgrimage will shape you. And that pilgrimage will be your destiny. So you cannot say, I, I don't play this game. There is no such a thing. Basically, our lady is asking us, do not allow the negative forces of the world to shape you. Do not allow the world to shape you. Do not allow the evil to poison you. Do not walk the pilgrimage that will destroy you. Do not be a pilgrim that will shape you in such a way that you will be destroyed. Organize your life in a way that will, that in this life that you live, God will be able to create you influence you, shape you, speak to you, walk with you, live your life in such a way where God will have a chance in your life. That is basically the desire and the wish and the will of Our Lady. There are some fears which you really didn't want to touch. There are some selfish areas of your life where you desperately guard your money, your time, your relationships, you don't want those to be touched. And suddenly a pot is being stirred. Is, is there such a thing? And, 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 uh, and then life is, becomes dramatic. And it's very, very wonderful when you're in pilgrimage like this and you hate it, you don't like it. That, that is the area where God is speaking with you. Because it's not about magic or you. It's, it's about your whole ability to integrate the will of God into your life. The tragedy of our faith is that uh, we really give measure to the Lord. We believe and we decide the dogmas, the priorities, and the beliefs. And, and in such a way, we actually become atheists. When I decide what God needs to be in my life, then I am making idols, and I'm an atheist. I don't believe that in a true, real God, I make my idols. That was uh, something that Moses had to deal with. When he met his people, he was very angry. And I think this today, the culture today is the culture of idols. Where every day, in the very mentality of our life, we decide what God needs to be in my life. And that is why today, the problem is with our children. They are really uh, deprived because we don't have, we don't provide for them this dimension of incarnation. We say that we believe one thing, and they saw, they see totally something different. They don't see saints, and our children need saints. They need to see the incarnation of Christ. They need to see the culture of God. They see. Yours and my pilgrimage. So, so the sacraments became the central event of Medjugorje. And nothing changed since those days and nothing will change. That is, that is amazing gift to all of us priests. It gave us absolute confidence 
We are not to preach operations, visionaries, messages. We are pilgrims all united in the person of Christ in the sacraments and the mother bring her family together in her son, Jesus. Zdravo Mariju, milosti puna gospodin s tobom, blagoslovljena ti među ženama i blagoslovljen tu lovo utrave tvoj Isus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. a never-ending place you always uh, every day I, I, I discover a new uh, uh, almost district of Medjugorje like a building <laughs> just <laughs> from nowhere <laughs> and, uh, and I thought that oh I saw the village but uh, I just noticed that I didn't see anything yet They built this. They they build uh, all this. They uh, they will tell us uh, uh -huh. the story. And uh, uh, some people who live uh, now here, mm -hmm. um, some it's something like community that's mm -hmm. very um, free. Not so. It's all the same. No? Uh, no problem. It's not cold. Oh, okay. yeah. Father Grace, come. They're doing an interview. Oh, good. This beautiful young woman is, is from, Hungary. from Hungary. Hungary. This young man is from Hi. Ukraine. And this beautiful young woman is from Russia. Russia? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Great. Yes, Ukraine. Ukraine, nice to meet you. <laughs> I came here to discover. Uh, uh, and... Uh, Today we went to a mass, and uh, the priest said at the mass that uh, if you don't go uh, every Sunday to uh, the mass, you you are a sinner, and uh, uh, you, you are not a believer. And uh, so that's uh, really something which uh, came to me because I'm uh, I'm on my way to I'm looking for my way, so I'm not a, a pilgrim here, and I'm not going to church. <laughs> and not uh, praying, and uh, uh, I just felt that, oh, so, <laughs> so I'm, uh, uh, I, I, I feel a bit uh, that uh, where is my freedom in this, and uh, also if God is love, and uh, 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 yes, if, if God is love, and the Virgin Mary uh, is here and gives love, that's what I I hear from people uh, here, and I see in people's eyes. Then how does it? Uh, then I really feel that it's a kind of paradox, uh, and uh, and I don't know. What do you think about this? Yeah, it, yes, it is freedom. It's always freedom, and not like the Islamic country where it's by force. Mm -hmm. God always, um, he always invites invites us to partake in his life. And if you read in John's Gospel, John chapter 6, Jesus clearly says, I am the living bread come down from heaven. If you eat this bread, I will abide in you, and you will abide in me. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life within you. But if you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will live in you and I will raise you up on the last day. So it's so important, the life of grace. The life of grace is given to us at baptism. When we were baptized, our soul was washed clean of original sin. And God infused his grace into our soul. Now that grace maintains its presence in our soul until we push that grace out of the side. So really, for us Catholics, not to go to Mass on Sunday is a serious sin. Mm -hmm. It's a mortal sin. Mm -hmm. 
um, and that takes away sanctifying grace from our soul. To receive that sanctifying grace back, we need sacramental confession. Mm-hmm. And I love the way Father Svet put it. Initially, the apparitions was up there on the hill, mm-hmm. and it was the communists that brought it down to the yeah, church yeah, yeah, yeah. in a paradox. Yes, yes. And, and he so he was God working in a beautiful way to bring us to church, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. And it was through any means, through the communists of all people, mm-hmm. they brought the people to church. And what did they receive at the church? The sacraments. If we really think of along those lines, we think, wow, I don't want to let a day go without receiving Jesus in Holy Communion. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's awesome. It's a great gift. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so surprised how merciful God is. We have lived here now 17 years. We have never seen Our Lady. We have never heard any divine voices. It's never been as difficult for us. Sometimes we want to run away. The peace and the joy of what the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Knowing that God exists. You know our story. Patrick was so wounded in the Catholic school that he decided that God did not exist at age 14. And when our son was 14, he said, Dad, who is God? I heard people speaking about God. You never spoke to me about God. Patrick took a $20 bill and said, This, my son, is your God. The more money you have, the more God you have. I've seen what goes on in the church. There is no God. So for that man, to have had his life completely changed in one message that he read from a little booklet of the messages of Our Lady of Magical in Canada. I'm calling you to conversion for the last time. I've come to tell you that God exists. God exists. You know, sometimes you wonder, oh, how silly. Why would she have to say that? But that's the very basis of everything. I really believe he exists. I really believe he exists. And I believe that he's my daddy, my father, my all. And I believe that I am his creature, he my creator. And I believe that he loves me so much that he created me, not only to be here on this short life on earth, but in heaven with him forever. And I believe that heaven is my home. My future is heaven. You know, it's so simple. God exists. I mean, if we just believe that, because if I really believe he exists, if I really believe that he loves me so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for me, for me, for each one individually, not as a group, as a mass, individually, they would have died just for me. then it's not so hard to endure the little crosses that seem so impossible if there's no meaning and goal to them. If I don't have a meaning to my suffering, I don't want it. If there's no meaning to know that my Father exists, God exists, and He permits even the things that are not pleasant to me that I may be purified. A lady said, never ask for suffering. Never. This is not our objective. God does not want us to suffer. He doesn't say, oh yes, I want you to suffer. No. He says, never ask for suffering. But when my son gives it to you, accept it as he did, with love, patience, perseverance, and offer it. It's so exciting to know that everything has meaning. Suffering has meaning. Life has meaning. Joy is meaning. 
when we know that God exists. He, creator, I, the creature. Again, St. Catherine of Siena says, I will teach you the secret of the universe. That's God the Father speaking. I am, and you are not. Creator and creature. Love does so much that he created us. Because love cannot but create. Love cannot but give. Possible. And out of that love, he created us. For eternity and give us the gift of this beautiful pilgrimage on earth. May I come to him and choose him freely. As Father was saying just a moment ago, through sacramental confession. Sacramental means we can come back. When we are in sin, especially mortal sin, we lose our freedom. Ivan, the visionary once said, I see our lady. But more important than seeing her with my eyes, we are all called to see her with our heart. And in an interview with Maria's mother, who is now deceased, Maria the Visionary, I remember one interview was asking her, said, how do you feel about your daughter? And the mother of God coming to your daughter for all these years. She's a very simple, beautiful woman of deep faith. She said, did I understand the question right? I repeated it again. And she said, I'm sorry. That question is very silly to me. The mother of God is not coming to my daughter. The mother of God has always been with us. Had she not been with us, we would not have been able to stay alive through the time of communism, through the time of, of the invasion of the Turks. We would have been annihilated, destroyed. The Mother of God has always been with us. My daughter has just received the grace to see her. Like Mount Tabor, where the apostles had the grace to see the divinity of Christ. These few visionaries are chosen to be able to see the Mother of God who says, My Son and I are always with you. Always. And one of the messages is shock me, because in her new message she says, I will love you until the gates of hell close behind you. And she reiterates very clearly, hell exists, heaven exists, purgatory exists. And it's not God who sends us to hell. It is we who choose hell and earth by not living the commandments, by not living what he asks of us. And when we die, we just continue. That will be lived. So what do we have to do? do not what, what is he asking for us? You know, it's so simple. It's like, I think he used the word signpost. Mm -hmm. On a road we have signposts. Mm -hmm. To come here from... Russia, from Hungary, Ukraine, from Split. You have signposts. Makarska left, Split right, Medjugorje. Signposts. And we look at the signpost and say, Aha, I can turn because this is where I want to go. And she tells us there are five basic points. So simple. Everything else can be reduced to those five. Dear children, she said, I bow before your free will. This shocks me. Because she, before whom we kneel to pray to, comes before us from heaven and says, I bow before your free will and I pray of you. Please help me to help you because times are very serious. If you live my messages, you will see miracles. And if you don't, I cannot help you. Dear children, please pray my holy rosary every day together. Your children, please fast every Wednesday and Friday. Through fasting and prayer, wars can be stopped, natural disasters averted. The world changed. Your children, please read the sacred scripture every single day. She cried when she said, you've forgotten the Bible, the living word of God. We can't read the Bible. The Bible 
is a living person, not a book. It's the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible reads us. Dear children, please confess at least once a month. Your first step to conversion is confession. Without the priest, there is no confession. Dear children, please place the Holy Mass in the first place at least every Sunday. Prepare yourself at least one hour for this most important moment of your life, the Holy Mass, where you receive Jesus Christ, true God and true man, my Son in the Eucharist, remain in thanksgiving after this important, most important moment of your life, the Holy Mass. Dear children, if you live my messages, you will see miracles. Fall in love with my son, who was blessed sacrament of the altar. Surrender to him. If you live my messages, you will see miracles. And if you don't, I cannot help you. And that's the beautiful thing, that it's not too late. It's not too late. We're not dead yet. We have counted hours, but we're not dead yet. We can begin today. We can begin today to say yes. In the words that she taught us in an apparition, here we are, Mother. Please, you guide us. Take us by the hand. Guide us in the way of the will of God. And the will of God is love and mercy itself. And we can begin. It's so exciting. <laughs> Something there are a few things in your life which are beyond your yourself. You just cannot help yourself with, mm -hmm. you know, s changing something yeah, about yeah. your personality. But God can give you the strength to change it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could uh, each of you make some kind of intention why you want to, like, what do you want to do it for, for someone, for something. Mm -hmm. Just we can just come a little bit closer to what he really felt, mm -hmm. not exactly to what he experienced during that time because uh, yeah. so mm -hmm. so this mountain is about the way of Jesus with the cross. Mm -hmm. So Lord Jesus we give you our judging and please help us not to judge other people. Please help us to love them just the way they are. And also please help us to love ourselves. Help me to love myself the way I am not the way that other people maybe would like me to be because I'm created according to your image and uh, I know that you love me the way I am. Oče náš, ktorý s nami by si posvedca meno Tvoje, príď kráľovstvo Tvoje, byť vôľa Tvoje ako v nebi, tak i na zemi. Ľud náš nasúšný, daš nám na sedení, na starom dolge naše, ako že mňa stavňujem dolžnikom naše, nevidí nás v jaskušení, ale zdravá nás je prípadná také. That on this image you show me that I am allowed to fail, to commit sin. But you also show me that you, you want to help me to raise, as you stood up and uh, again took up your cross and continued on the way. I thank you, Jesus, that you, you are encouraging me to take up everything that I have, all that I am, just to follow you. How great could be the pain of the mother who sees her own son carrying the cross. 
Uncle Mary, we thank you that you stayed so close to your son, that you never left him, that you were all the time right next to him, even in the most difficult times. You give us your love, Mother, just as you did it to Jesus. Wir beten dich an, Herr Jesus Christus, und sagen dir Dank. Meine Lieben, an dieser Station sehen wir die ganze Liebe vollendet. Jesus, you see our fear from death. And we ask you to be to be with us in this hour of our death, to be present, to fight for our salvation, so that we could meet in eternal joy. image of the Jesus resurrected, um, but this is something that uh, is added to the weight of the cross. It's not uh, called any kind of a station, but it is the result. We, we believe that through Jesus, that when Jesus died, he, he rose again on the third day. So, and everything, you know, Jesus did would not have the sense, uh, would, would have no meaning, it would not come to life again. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. I hope you will not get cold. My name is Goran. I was born in Split in Croatia, in a Catholic family. But in my family there was no faith, no prayer, and no one went to church. Though my parents used to tell me to go to church, but I was bored there. Because when you look at the Ten Commandments, it is life for an elderly lady. My father was a sailor. He spent more time on sea than at home. And throughout my childhood, I was either watching TV or hanging around with friends. I loved to watch American movies on TV. My idols were the Hollywood actors. The relationship I had with my father, I am not sure if I can call it a relationship. My father is a good man. He simply didn't know how to talk. All our relationship was, was that he beat me. When I was 13 years old, my mom died from leukemia. I fell into depression because I never told my mom that I loved her. I never kissed her. I never hugged her, though I wanted to do it a thousand times. But I was ashamed to show my feelings because I thought it was an expression of weakness. Eight months after that, my father got married again. Hatred was born in my heart. Hatred to my father because I could not understand how he could in such a short time forget my mom, his wife. Hatred to my brother because he was an alcoholic and he did not care much. Hatred to that woman who came into our house and was acting as my mom. At the first anniversary of her death, I borrowed a gun from my friend. It was in 1978. I came home and my father was watching soccer. I came to him and wanted to talk to him. He turned and slapped me on my face. I went into my room put the gun to my head and shot. Doctors said that the bullet remained in my head. 
It is not possible to take it out, and that this guy won't live long. Afterwards, my father came with my stepmother and told me that the bullet is out and everything was okay. But I didn't care a bit. I fell into even greater depression because I did not kill myself. When I came out of the hospital, I started taking all kinds of different pills together with the alcohol. My friends were telling me that marijuana is simply an herb, and this is a gift of God. When you smoke marijuana, you think better, eat better, sleep better. No problem, you only laugh. But deep inside, I understood that marijuana is considered a drug. In heroin, I was attracted not to the euphoria or strength of the feelings. In heroin, I was attracted that I could cry. For the first time in my life, I could do good things for other people. I could simply be good, and I was not ashamed. That's why I truly felt free. In the beginning, everything was good. I had a little money and a little bit of drugs, and the feeling was very strong. But the time was passing by, and I was in need of more heroin, and my feelings became weaker and weaker. You can see this paradox. My father, all his life, worked bringing money and material things home. But it took me one month to steal everything and sell it. I told my father, I was waiting for you for 20 years. We have nothing to talk about. You live your life and I will live mine. At night, three policemen came to our house and brought heroin with them. They came into my room and dropped it and said, You are a dealer and we are going to put you in prison. They only wanted to help me by thinking, logically, if they put me to prison for five to six months, I would get scared and would change. They threw me in prison. And what happened? I learned there how to steal better, how to mix drugs better, so that they could give stronger effects, and which things would sell better. So when I came out of prison, I had more knowledge than before. In the city of Split, the psychic ward was located underground. And I had my own room, and all day I was watching TV, while doctors were giving me pills and did their therapies. I was perfectly settled. It looked like the holidays. I didn't even have to steal. My friends were coming every day, and through the window they were giving me alcohol and drugs. One evening, I ran away to the dance club, still dressed in my psychic ward clothing. Then the police came in and returned me back to the hospital. Doctors saw that they couldn't help me and threw me out. At home again, there were problems, agony, quarreling, fits, blood. My father was looking for help, and his friend was giving him advice. Marco, why don't you go find him a job? So I began working, but pretty soon it was obvious it was a big mistake because I stole half of the warehouse. So I borrowed money from everybody and never gave back anything. One time I asked my boss to give me money and he got very upset because I hadn't returned him the money from the last time and he began to be angry with me. And I got mad and I took a knife and I chased him around the warehouse. They understood that everything is not so simple and they threw me out. My father was speaking to me from the closed doors. Listen to me, my son. Between home and the street, you chose the street. So please go and live on the street. And one day, when you decide to be a man, come back, and as a family, we will try to help you. So I returned to my old way of life. That's who I was and what I was. Nobody and no one. One time I woke up in the forest. My mouth was full of flies. And one winter evening in January, I was laying in a broken house, and I began thinking about my family, about my childhood. And the more I was thinking about it, the harder it was. And I understood that I was at fault, and nobody else. And do you know what happened? I began to cry and pray the Hail Mary because this prayer was left in my head from the time that I was forced to go to church. So all night I was praying, My Mother of God, please, I'm asking you, take me to yourself or stretch your hand towards me so I can change my miserable life.
I cannot go on anymore. One day I was sitting in a park. I was looking through the park and I saw a woman walking around. She was looking and it looked like she was looking for somebody. She came to me directly when she saw me. She told me her story. She was the mother of a drug addict who had spent time in prison. She hired a lawyer and through the lawyer her son was able to leave the prison and go to the Chinakolo community. Then she asked her son if he had any friends she could help. Then she told me, you need to go to Medjugorje. I asked, what is this? This is a small town in Bosnia, Herzegovina, where the Mother of God is appearing, and she is waiting for you. She will help you. So I thought, woman, I am a schizophrenic, but you are even worse than me. When I came to Medjugorje, the first thing I did was steal two bottles of wine from the store. I got drunk and while walking through Medjugorje, I faced the gates where the sign was written, Community Chinakolo. The crisis I lived through for the first month was indescribable. But from the crisis nobody died yet, so I didn't die either. I was not going to become a priest, so why do I need to pray three rosaries a day, I thought. I did not see any point in prayer. I told them I had no problem with prayer, I had problems with heroin. And why do I have to break these stones? I don't have a problem with stones, I have a problem with heroin. One day it was 40 degrees outside, and my guardian angel was telling me, Do you want to do work? No, I said. Okay, no problem. Go and sit by the shade and we will work for you. Super, I thought. But as I was sitting in the shade, cooling off, and the guys were digging ditches working, the stones were flying out of it. They were all sweaty and wet. I was looking at them and wondering, are these people normal? But they felt super. They were laughing and singing. So I began to wake up at night to pray. I kneeled down, but I had no faith. I thought I would love to be reconciled to my father, but I would probably die before it would be possible. Of all that I have told you, I haven't even described 3% of the evil that I have done to my father, to my family, and to the people around me. But somewhere deep inside, I had hope. After a few days, a man came in and said, Pilgrims have come from Croatia. Please show them the community. Okay, I said. I was going towards them. Opening the doors, and the first one I saw was my father. I hid my face from my father. That was the hardest moment of my life, because the feeling of guilt and shame I was feeling I couldn't describe. I had no strength to look him in the eyes. I was debating with myself whether to run away or to stay, run away or stay. But I was running all the time and I couldn't do it any longer. Everything happened in ten seconds. My whole life flashed before my eyes. My father saw that I was having a hard time, and he came to me. He embraced me and cried, and I began to cry too. We didn't say anything, we just wept. I told my father, when you return home, please begin to pray for me with your wife. Do you know what he answered me? My son, we have prayed for you for a long time already. Maybe everything was supposed to happen this way, so that faith and prayer would come back to our family. But of course, maybe it's not the case. But that's how I wanted to imagine it, so that I could accept my past. So my past would be meaningful. This meaning gave me strength to carry on in community. I had no reason to come out of community if I didn't have a job. But one priest told me, no problem, I have a job for you, a very good job. You will be a director. I thought, director, this is cool. A former drug addict comes out of community and becomes a director? So a few days later, I met him again and asked him which job I would have. 
You will be cleaning toilets. What did you think? Now you can believe me or not. I don't care. When I saw this beautiful young woman, I knew that she would become my wife. I cannot describe this to you. I just knew this. I became very nervous. I had no time to follow her, and I was supposed to sit in the bathroom waiting for her. So I began to pray. I found out who this pretty woman was, and so the problems began. She was from Czech Republic and didn't speak Croatian. She was 13 years younger than me and had never dated before. She came to Medjugorje to pray because she was discerning her vocation as a nun. So this is her. And now me. I am a drug addict and a thief. I'm covered in tattoos and cuts. I am a schizophrenic, an epileptic, with a bullet in my head. I had hepatitis C, and the most attractive thing is that when I smiled, I had only three teeth in my mouth. I was depressed for 20 days. After eight months, nothing changed. We didn't move even one millimeter ahead. I thought, something must be changed. She told me, no, 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 and I told her, yes, yes, yes. I saw that I could win, even though she was resisting, until she said, okay, let's try. We're just going to give it a chance. But she made one condition, that we would not have sex or kiss or do anything physical before the sacrament of matrimony if that would ever happen. She was afraid and did not know what to do. She was afraid to marry me and take this responsibility for the rest of her life. From the Bible she received the word while she was praying, Remain here. This is your way. Do not be afraid. I am with you. This was the answer that she could marry me. We received the sacrament of matrimony in June of 2000. Our eldest daughter is Lucia, eight and a half. Then our son Luca, he is six years old. Anna is four years old. We have little Mark, who is six months. And if somebody says that something is impossible, believe me, with God, everything is possible. Sometimes we think we can solve our problems quickly and by ourselves. But now I know that God knows better. He knows the best time and the best things for us. When it comes to my sickness, it is very interesting. From the moment I arrived in Medjugorje, I have never had epileptic seizures. All paranoia and fear in my head is gone. The only thing I'm afraid of is this check. Hi, Anichko. Hi, my love. Bye.
Who speak English? I speak English. Uh, do you communicate with Koran? Which language? Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes in Czech language too. But when I want, uh, then he understands me. So I have to speak Croatian, you know. My mother was there and uh, was here, mm -hmm. and uh, after came home, mm -hmm. she told me about messages, about uh, operations, but it was nothing for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after a year, she uh, died, and uh, first time uh, I was uh, looking her documents, her diaries, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a difficult time in our family. Uh, I had three brothers and uh, we were in big conflict mm -hmm. and it was so hard for me because my uh, mother's de death uh, mm -hmm. did nothing, nothing happens, nothing changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's uh, so uh, horrible was like if it uh, changed, changed nothing, mm -hmm. what can change? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> uh, and uh, no peace, uh, there are no peace, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I opened the uh, diary of mother and uh, there was short, a little uh, paper mm -hmm. and uh, it was a message of uh, Our Lady. Uh, I understood it, but for me it was when I read it, Dear children, mm -hmm. please I call you to be in peace. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. are in my hands. Mm -hmm. I, I love you. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was not something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. It was absolutely uh, real mm -hmm. from this moment. And just the most important message is about peace, and mm -hmm. uh, it uh, comes uh, directly to heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was my first <laughs> uh, message from my mother. And it was, uh, I'm sure, a message from her. Mm -hmm.
came here? Huh? Were you happy that you came here? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It will be very strange now to go back to Budapest and to the completely normal. opposite life. To the actually, normal life? Yeah. And now, actually, now we go to Sarajevo in the evening. Uh, friends are waiting for me with. Uh, Rakia and <laughs> the things like <laughs> alcohol party <laughs> and yeah. they are smoking. Did you buy a rosary for them? <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually bought a Rakia for them. <laughs> Katka. Oh boy! We are going to the Nama. No, so we are going to the Nama. 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 Teda, tak mít party. Čau, čau. Ahoj. Ahoj. Tak ahoj. Tak ahoj. Tak ahoj. Tak ahoj. Tak ahoj. Последние несколько лет я э, делаю, живу, и я как бы не, не нет четкого понимания, что я делаю логически, но есть э, просто ощущение, что вот э, что приходит, и я это принимаю, либо не принимаю. Yeah, before I was living like I produce everything, I was doing everything, creating everything by myself, and now it's a bit another situation because I am just like sitting next to the river and the river brings me some. Then I get this invitation from Natalia to come here. Uh, I have uh, like some rational thinking and irrational thinking. feeling. Like I feel if I have to go or not, if it's time to go or not, because uh, maybe it's not, I came for another reason. So what was the most important things here during the week for me? You? Now I am just on the way of thinking. I faced with something which I have still to uh, do in my life. So. I mean, it's connected with God, it's connected also with myself. Uh, there is still some questions which are my questions and I have to find an answer for, for this. And it's not like uh, you come to the place and you got the, like, opa! And it's a uh, possibility... You got the way how to get there. Yes. 